Hello and welcome to the third video on the Apple Script series. On the last video, we learned how to uh, display a dialog on Apple Script. On this video, we're going to learn about variables. Now, first of all, variables are what you see in maths, for example. So in algebra, when you had x is equal to 5, you could just use that in your equations. So let's say then another equation, you had 2 plus x, the result will be 7. Uh, now, the thing with variables is that they are variable. So when we say variable, it means they can change. It's unlike a number. When, when you say 5, that can always be, it can only be equal to 5. 5 will always be 5. But x can be 5, it can be 6, it can be 7, it can be whatever. The values can change along the way. That's why it's called a variable, because it has a variable value. Now, in programming, that is used a lot. You will see this whenever you're scripting or programming pretty much any language um, that is always used, and you'll probably use it every single time you're programming. So let's just get started on AppleScript to do this. Again, like I said, on AppleScript, everything is really simple, and you kind of tend to use English for everything. So let's just say, to do a variable, let's call it var. So we just go set var to, and we put whatever we want for it. So here, I haven't explained this to you yet. When we put double quotes, what this means is that we're creating a string. A string is a string of text. What that means is it's basically words or sentences. Uh, this is unlike just a word in programming. Whenever you want to have a sentence or a word that you actually want to spell out to the person instead of actually making it a part of your code, you put it in quotes. So basically that is what the program is saying. Where you have just simple words like this. This is actually part of your code and this will actually be run by the computer. So whenever you want something not to be run, you put it in quotes and it becomes a string of text which is something to be displayed to the user. So here we set var to let's say hello world. Okay, now to compile, instead of clicking the button, you can just go command K and that compiles it for you. Now if we were to run this, Instead of pressing the button, you can also go command R. You see down here it says hello world, because that is the value of var. Now if we want to have a bit more use on this, you, we can just go display, display dialog. And what we do here is we just say var without the quotes. Now I'll show you why. So we'll run this first. And you see it says hello world, because that's the value of var. Now if we were to put quotes in here, Notice what happens. We compile it, we run it, and it says var, not hello world, because now we have a string and not a variable. Now let's just get some more use into this. So let's say you want to ask what is the person's name. So now what I, what I can do is I can do a display dialog, however with a prompt. I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll start off by saying, by creating a variable, and we'll call the variable the name. Um, okay, so set the name to text returned of, we open brackets, and we put a display dialog. So display dialog, and we're going to say, what, so what's your name? Okay, now the trick here is, if we just do this, then it won't ask for anything. What we want to do here is we want to go default answer. If I can type properly, and we will leave empty quotes. What this does is it gives us a prompt. So we'll compile this and we'll run it. And you see now it gives me this question, what's your name? And it gives me a space to write my name. So let's just say Andres. And you see down here, it gave me the result of Andres. Now let's say I want to display this name. What I do is I go display dialog, the name, compile it and run it. And if I go on this, it will give me back my name. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting. What we'll do now is we'll say, we'll ask the person what their name is. So what's your name? And then what we'll do is we'll give them another question and say, set the location to text returned of Display dialog. 
and then we're just going to say, what's your location? Now what we want to do here is we want to go default answer. And what we'll do this time is, let's say I'm distributing this app to people that are usually in New Zealand. So what I'm going to say here is this is something that we don't want them to be typing every single time. So we'll just leave a default answer of New Zealand. So now we'll compile this. And I'll show you a few more things here. Now what we want to do is we want to say, well, we want to give them a bit of a sentence back. So we want to say hello. Okay. So you see now, what I did is hello is not a variable. So I have to put it in quotes to make it a string. But then I want to put a variable after that. So what I do is I use this, the symbol for end, which is shift seven on my keyboard. And then, so basically you're saying display dialog, hello which is basically the text, and the name, which is a variable. And then we want to say, and something else. But just before we do that, you will notice one thing here. I said hello, and then I gave the name. However, I did not put a space anywhere. When I type my name in here, I'm not typing with a space before. So in computer language, we've got to put a space before there so that the name shows up with a space before hello. Now we want to continue our sentence. So we'll continue there and we want to put a full stop after the name. Then we put a space and then we will say uh, how's the weather in space and the location. And that's it. We compile it. And when we run it, we can say, what's your name, Andres? What's your location? New Zealand, that's fair enough. And then, hello Andres, how's the weather in New Zealand? Now, you'll notice there, I haven't completed my sentence, so I can just go back in there and say, and, and so I can finish it off with a question mark. And I run that, and I say Andres, New Zealand, and there we go, we've got everything finished up. So that's a really simple way that you can use variables uh, and it allows you to do a few cool things. Now this is all fa fairly simple and not that useful, but you will learn how to do more useful things with it afterwards. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for our next video on mass operations. Thank you for watching.